back on the strip again. Oh my god. Okay. So, we need to go up and talk to House. Ah, Raul. We need to stay here. Okay, boss. I like Raul. He stays where I uh, tell him to stay. He's a little bit like a dog. A little bit more rotten and a little bit more self-conscious than a dog, but... God, I'm a terrible person for saying that. Uh, up to the penthouse. And let's uh, chat with House hey, about here? the terrible thing that I did last time. Uh, house. Have you destroyed the Brotherhood of Steel? Yes, House, I have. The Brotherhood of Steel is no longer a problem. I've wiped them out. Single-handedly destroying a Brotherhood of Steel bunker is quite an accomplishment. Platoons of NCR troops have died trying to do the same. This welcome news comes just in time, as events in the wider world are coming to a head. Aaron Kimball, the president of the new California Republic, is going to visit Hoover Dam to boost morale. Apparently, he hasn't considered the effect on the troops' morale of seeing their beloved leader get his brains blown out by a Legion sniper. I need you to make sure that no harm comes to President Kimball. It's fortunate that you've maintained good relations with the NCR. I could use some more details about this job. Answer some questions for me, would you? Questions like, will President Kimball survive his visit to Hoover Dam? Well, why do you care whether Kimball lives or dies? You already know that the NCR is going to try to take you on in a war. If they're coming after you no matter what, Kimball's death has no bearing on that certainty. I care because he is a known quantity. Not the man so much as the political context he inhabits. Kimball rose to prominence as the hero of the Mojave when he led a campaign of reprisals against tribals who dared to attack NCR citizens. Ordering the occupation of Hoover Dam was his first act of office. As water and electricity flowed to NCR cities, his popularity soared. Conversely, his failure to annex the Mojave these seven years, and the immense costs of occupying a foreign land, have eroded his popular support. Alright, but that still doesn't answer why you want him to live. Kimball's entire political career is inextricably bound up with the NCR's occupation of the Mojave. It's his war. If I compel the NCR to retreat, Kimball will be the sacrifice offered to the gods so decent NCR citizens can get on with their lives. In retrospect, the Mojave and Hoover Dam will seem like one man's misadventure. Kimball will be blamed, not me. Not New Vegas. Ah, uh, I see. On the other hand, if Kimball were to be assassinated here and now... Then the hero of the Mojave would become the martyr of Hoover Dam. And when, subsequently, I force the NCR to retreat, they lick their wounds and dream of righteous vengeance against New Vegas. Hello, embargo. Farewell, tourist economy. I've calculated and recalculated these probabilities. Kimball must live. Well, I concur, House. Let's get on with business, then. Will you ensure that President Kimball survives his visit to Hoover Dam? Don't worry, House. Nothing will happen to him. Not on my watch. Now, I assume you have some advice about how I should get myself into the middle of this affair. Simple. An NCR ranger named Graham is in charge of security arrangements for the visit. Present yourself to him. Let him know you want to help. Given your reputation, it's a near certainty that he'll accept your offer. Don't dally. The precise time of Kimball's visit is a closely guarded secret, but it will happen soon. I've heard of you. I'm glad you're here to help us out. This is a delicate matter, and we need all the help we can get from people we can trust. We've got a lot to do to prepare for the President's visit, and not much time. Once we start, we'll be on a strict timetable. Are you ready? Uh, hold on. I'm gonna need to ask a few questions. Ask your questions, but keep it short. Well, let's start out with what your security arrangements are. Security detail consists of rangers stationed here at the dam. Some will keep an eye on the crowd while others will watch the perimeter. Snipers and sharpshooters have been assigned to key locations, and we also have a special canine unit sniffing out members of the crowd. I've also locked down access to critical locations such as the landing platform on the visitor center. Alright, that sounds solid. 
but I'm going to need access to all of it. All right, I'll give you full access. All right, now that I can get where I need to go, I also need to be able to use my weapons. That's not going to cause any particular trouble, is it? We trust you, so you're free to have your weapons. Just don't do anything too crazy, and we'll back you up. All right. So, about your security arrangements. Do you have a detailed schedule for the visit? I have a full itinerary here. Here you go. Now, is there anything specific you need me to do? A gap that needs closing, a post that needs to be watched. Someone like you. I'm just glad to have you on board. Do whatever you can. Security sweeps, talk to people, keep an eye out. Well, in that case, do you have any possible leads on security threats? Anything that doesn't match up. The Legion will definitely try something. We don't have any solid leads yet. I'd almost expect something direct from them. But given the circumstances, there's a possibility of something more subtle, like sabotage. But since we don't have anything solid, we'll just have to keep our eyes out for anything out of the ordinary. All right, then. That's all the questions I had. If there's nothing else, then let's get moving. Let's get this show on the road. Good. The President doesn't arrive until tomorrow. Get some rest. I'll brief you in the morning. Glad you could join us. Most of my men are already on duty, and the crowd has already started gathering outside. We've got a busy day ahead of us. So what's the plan? The plan is to get through today without the shit hitting the fan. So I'll be overseeing the security team personally, and keeping in constant contact with people over the radio. It's a good bet that the Legion is gonna try something today, so we have to be prepared for anything. We'll do whatever it takes to get the President through this visit in one piece. All right then. Let's get this show on the road. President Kimball is arriving shortly. If you want to do any last-minute security sweeps or take a look around for anything suspicious, do it now. Once you're ready, meet me outside on the observation deck. But don't take too long. All right. <clears throat> now that I've finished hacking that terminal and checked inside of the closet, there's only one more thing that I needed to do. Uh, so... Like I said, all of the uh, the entries on the terminal, they show that I need to look out for a bomb and uh, a sniper, and... Okay, here we go. Hey, you haven't seen my friend around here, have you? His name is Ben, and he's an engineer. We were supposed to meet up so we can watch the president's speech together. But he hasn't shown up yet. Uh, he could be down in the barracks. He isn't. I already checked there this morning. We were supposed to meet up here about an hour ago. <sighs> I guess I'll just keep waiting. Sorry to bother you. Alright, so normally that's supposed to be your first tip-off, but you check the closet, you talk with her, you read the entries in the terminal, you get all the information you need, and really this is one of the Patrolling missions the almost makes that, uh... A nuclear winner. Oh, shut up. Let's see. I'll go ahead and activate this console. Controls for the AA, examine... No sign of tampering. So, uh... This is one of the games that does... Uh, this is one of the missions that does not hold your hand at all. Have you finished your security sweep? I think I've done just about everything I can. When will the president arrive? Looks like that's his vertebrate coming right now. It's showtime. Let's not mess this up. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got some security procedures to oversee. Freaking frame rates at Hoover Dam have never been fantastic. I'm feeling it right now. My eyes are bleeding. All right, there's his vertebrate. So, um, anyway, like I was saying. What I need to do is um, watch out for the bomb and uh, look out for the sniper on the tower. So it's obviously going to be the tower that's... Or, well, it's going to be the sniper nest that was mentioned in the log that's different from the others. It's going to be the one with the radio, because you can report in from the radio. Uh, but the way you're supposed to do this, I think, is you disable the bomb, then you go take care of the sniper, and then you take care of a guy in the crowd. But I think that what I'm about to do is kind of glitch, like, yeah, exploiting a glitch, where you come up into the tower here, and if you're quick enough, if you're quick enough, the, uh, the guy who infiltrates here to, uh, snipe the president, if, if you're quick enough and you're, and you're lucky, you can kill the, uh, the assassin, and you won't... No, uh, the, the the president won't go running. He won't, uh, you know, get tipped off, and he won't go running. And you'll have, Ladies you'll be able to gentlemen, hop like over to the vertebrae. It is my pleasure to introduce to you 
the, the president, president of the, the new California, California Republic, Republic, Aaron Kimball. Thank you, my fellow Californians, who have come so far to answer the call to service put forth by the government. Alright, get him, get him! And it is because of you that I am able to do so. Okay, it worked. We enjoy our privileges because you take the greatest of risks and are prepared to make the most noble sacrifices. It is because of men and women like Private First Class, Jeremy Watson, that Nevada and the new California Republic remain free and secure. Born in a tin shack on the outskirts of one pine, Jeremy Watson never had an easy his father, his father was a caravan guard, guard on the short route, and his mother, like many Californians, braved the ruins of the old world as a prospector. They, they suffered, suffered through water shortages, raider attacks, and, and the Brotherhood War. war. Like, like our mighty Sierra Nevadas, they endured. But the, the time, time came when they could go no longer shoulder the bird alone. You are looking at the presidential vertebrate. The assassins could have done something to Bear Force One. You search the vertebrate and notice a strange item that doesn't belong. Upon examination, you notice it's a bomb. You skillfully disable the bomb and remove it from the vertebrate. Twelve years ago, they called out for help, and the Republic heard of them. Troopers, rangers just like you, answered the clarion call. Men and women stepped forward to say, I will carry the weight. And at all late, we made true on our promise, driving out the raider tribes to establish a lasting peace in the eastern Sierra Nevadas. We carried the weight, and though we left behind many of our brothers and sisters on that battlefield, it did not break us. Ten years ago, Chief Police met with representatives of the Desert Rangers to discuss terms of what would become the Ranger Unification Treaty. The treaty was more than a resolution to welcome the Desert Rangers into the Republic. It was a covenant to protect Southern Nevada against Caesar's legion and the tyranny of his regime. There are some back home who ask me, but who are we protecting? What is the bad to us? Sometimes we forget that the light of our society shines beyond our borders. Sometimes we take those privileges for granted that our forebears fought so hard to achieve. We must always remember that wherever Californians stand, we carry our principles with us. Equal respect, representation, and protection under the laws of a just republic. This was the same fire that burned in the heart of the old world that preceded us. We are the heirs of that civilization, torturers eastward of the Pacific, into the darkness of this wasted land. When the Republic called the men and women of California to carry that fire across the Mojave, Jeremy Watson answered. You answered. Together you carried the weight. And when the F.C. Watson's platoon came under attack that forlorn home, he took, took the greatest, greatest risk. risk. Not, Not only for his fellow Californians, but for California itself. He was prepared to make the most noble sacrifices to defend the principles of our republic, even here, on the vast soil. His actions are a beacon to all of us who stand here today in tribute to his power. Private First Class Jerry Watson, on behalf, On behalf of the Senate and the people of the new California, California Republic, it is my honor to present you with the Star of Sierra Madre. Not far from this spot, upon what we stand as a tribute to the sacrifice made by those who came before us. The men and women who fulfilled the promise we made to the Desert Rangers. Its back is inscribed with the names of the troopers and rangers who carry the weight. And because they made the most noble sacrifices, it did not break us. Four years ago, we held this dam. Four years ago, we carried the weight. 
Four years, years ago, we drew a line through the Mojave as clear as the Colorado River. A line that Caesar cannot cross. Today, we stand here with our brothers and sisters to hold that line. Today, you honor all Californians by carrying that weight. Today, you are the waves of the Pacific. Push ever eastward. You are the sequoias rising from the Sierra Nevadas. Defiant and enduring. You are the great western light of California. Torchbearers in the darkness. Living reminders of all that is best in our republic. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Let's just get back out of here. What the hell are you waiting for? You think I want to get shot? Let's go. Good job today. We got the president out safe and sound. And I couldn't have done it without you. You have my thanks. Shot. Hopefully they'll do it! Oh, jeez, I got crippled. Uh-oh. One more. Ah, <laughs> oh, crap, I crippled myself again! Okay, no more of these HE missiles. <laughs> Whoop, uh, wrong button. Re-equip the... There we go. Alright, there's not much further down into the cave to go. I mean, the, the most difficult part is right there at the beginning because you don't have any place to hide, you don't have any place to backtrack to, so that's what makes this Deadwind Cavern so difficult. Um, I'm lucky. I mean, I, I really didn't think that this... Uh, a trip to Deadwind Cavern here would fit into the series. I thought for certain that this was one of the things that I was gonna have to cut. Uh, same thing happened with, uh, uh, what you, uh, uh, the White Glove Society and, uh, you know, the Ultralux, the Gormod, the, the mission, uh, well, quest beyond the beef. I thought for certain I was going to have to cut that out of the series just because, you know, I'm limited, so desperately limited on time to get this all done before Fallout 4. Um, but, no, that's not the case. All right, so um, I know I just said I'm gonna I'm done with these HE missiles, but I've only got one left, and I'm, I'm I know the shape of the cave here. If I take a step all the way back to the end here, and I shoot at the far, ooh. okay, maybe. Okay, yeah, he walked back. Okay, we'll use this uh, HE, and I'm pretty sure there's gonna be another death claw down the far end. Just zoom in. There it is. I can see it moving. Okay. One shot should kill it. Okay, yeah, I killed it. Uh oh, there's another one coming. Uh oh, that that must have been next to the one that I shot. Ooh, dangerous. Young Deathclaw, one more shot. I got so many missiles. There's, n I mean, it feels like a uh, it feels like a waste using all these missiles on just the. Oh my God, it's a mother Deathclaw. Kill it. Kill it with fire! Kill it with explosives and fire! Jesus Christ, no, 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 no! Okay, I crippled myself, but I fucking lived. Woof. Woof. That... <laughs> that was close. <sighs> Thank God for Annabelle. Okay. Um... I think I'm safe. I think I'm safe. Uh, th th there are probably more... Yeah, there are more death claws down in a pocket area. Um, I think I got two more pocket areas beyond this uh, this this section. Basically, th this cave does not go that deep at all. It's actually a very small cave. It's just, and that's the whole um, challenge of this cave: just how desperately small it is, and how many death claws there are in su such a small area. You can get swarmed really easily. It's pretty much a necessity that you do. Uh, uh oh, I think you saw me. Just aim for the back one. Probably hit the front one in the process. Yeah, sure enough. That worked. Let's use a uh, dinner bell on him. Oh! Abominable <laughs> rank 3. That's not so bad. I don't think that there's any loot in this particular section of the cave, though. Jesus. I'll tell you what, I'm very curious about how, um... How, uh the death claws and fallout 4 turn out. One thing that I did notice that I didn't notice before, it was um it was a sequence from the E3 demo where 
uh, the, they're, they're playing through it, and whoever's playing gets to a point where they pick up a set of power armor. That's another thing. It looks like power armor. I'm more than willing to bet at this point that power armor is something that you don't just get and continuously wear. Because in that mission, it looked like you had to, like, power up the, uh, the suit of T... I, I think it was a T-45B, whatever it was. Um, looked like it based on what I've seen from, uh, this in Fallout 3. But, uh, what happened was, in the video, if you look really closely whenever they were in the power armor, and they ended up fighting a Deathclaw, the Deathclaw started to leap back and forth, back and forth, to, uh, dodge the bullets that the minigun was firing. I, like, I saw that and I thought, oh my god, as if they weren't more, as if they weren't difficult enough. And the reason why that was brought to my attention was because someone made a clip out of it and, like, put it up on Reddit or something. I mean, it, oh shit, that's a, that's a, that's a legendary Deathclaw. Okay, don't get noticed, don't get noticed, don't get noticed. Let's target it and let's fire off two shots on this thing, because one nuke a grenade is not enough. This is a bubble bath to that baby. Oh my god. I Okay, he's, um, this, this, this guy's a little bit of a problem, but he's crippled, so I don't have to really worry about anything. I'll just shoot him in the face here. Die! Okay, I may have been... This is, this should, this is not, this is no longer Deadwind Cavern. This is Cripple Cave, okay? <laughs> Alright. This place is now Cripple Cave for how many times I have injured a limb. All right, now here's the whole reason why I'm down here. Mercy! The grenade machine gun for, uh, if I, oh, great. Can I repair anything? It does not look like it. Okay, I guess I could, um, there's pretty much nothing that I can get rid of. I'll just dump the, uh, armor back onto this corpse. Where are you? T-45, it's in terrible condition anyway. Where's the helmet? There we go, T-45D helmet. Perfect! Um, what the hell was I talking about? Ah, it doesn't matter. I'm done! I've, I've killed all the Deathclaws. Actually, I think that I've hit every Deathclaw nest in the entirety of the Wasteland at this point. I don't think there's any dedicated spawn location for Deathclaws that I'm missing at this point. Hmm. Is there anything else? No, there's definitely nothing else back that way. I am done with this cave, guys. I'm done with Deadwind Cavern. I killed all the Death Claws. I spent like... Well, I spent more missiles than I expected to. And I've also learned a valuable lesson about high explosive missiles and just how freaking large their blast radius is. Actually, now that I think about it, high explosive, the blast radius is probably high, uh, larger because they're high explosives. I went the wrong way. Uh, the blast radius of high explosive missiles is probably larger because they're high explosive, and then that's probably compounded with the fact that I've got, like, um, the splash damage perk, which is like a 25% larger area of effect with explosives? That would explain why I was getting cripples from all of those missiles I was firing off. Anyways, um, I'm gonna need to head back to town and sell off all of the junk that I got coming out here and, uh, from the death clause, so, Raul. Come on. Oops, wrong. Right behind you, boss. Perfect. Let's, uh, let's head it. Let's head out. So, the next task now is to finish and see a conclusion to everything. <laughs>